Hola, ¿cómo están? ¿Cómo están haciendo hoy? Espero que están teniendo un buen día. Hope you're having a good day. How are you doing, Mede Familia? So I'm back with another video. And here today, I wanted us to talk a little bit more about... Um, how to, I want us to talk a little bit more about introverts versus extroverts. Because for this video... I want to talk a little bit more about why it is or how it is that sometimes you could be an introvert and still get misclassified as an extrovert, right? So, right, particularly for the INFJ personality type. One thing that I'm seeing a lot of and that I've seen a lot of that's come up quite a few times for me is this sense of, or this misclassification of what it truly means to be an introvert, what it truly means to be an extrovert. So as I process through this here, I think that would be a good place for us to start. Um, so what does it mean to be an extrovert? Well, an extrovert gets their energy, literally gets their recharge and their energy from being around people. That's what it means to be an extrovert. It doesn't mean that you're good with people. That's different. It just means that you get your energy source from being around other people. So in contrast, to be an introvert means that you get your energy source from being by yourself, right? From spending and having that alone time. So it's really important for us to understand what the difference between extrovert and introvert is. I know that for me, most people that don't really know me or that I'm just meeting for the first time, or perhaps I don't necessarily spend a lot of time around them, uh, cl would classify me and do classify me as an extrovert. However, I'm not an extrovert, I'm an introvert, right? So not only am I an introvert, I am um, personality type wise, I am an INFJ personality type. So, you know, what does that mean? Why, how does that happen? Well, if we, if we go back to the core definition of what it means to be an introvert versus an extrovert, being an introvert doesn't mean that you're not good with people. Being an introvert just means your energy source probably gets depleted quite quickly by being around people. So I know for me particularly, it's, it's quite difficult for me to be around people for an extended period of time because my energy source uh, gets depleted quite quickly. But as I've worked on this, and I talked a little bit about this in my other video uh, where I talk about what to do if you're alone all the time or if you're lonely. So if you haven't watched that, make sure to check that out after this video. But I have been able to essentially work on this to the point where when I was younger, my max would be two to three hours in public before I become just a really cracky, cr cranky, crappy person because I cannot deal anymore past that time. Uh, but now it's really extended. I mean, I could go a whole weekend with someone. Say I take a trip to go visit friends or something. I could go a whole weekend and I'd be fine, right? Um, being around people there. But I think a lot of times that's because I bake in some alone time. I make sure to bake that in, whether it's by getting my home, my own hotel room or whatever the case may be. But I make sure to kind of like bake that in. If it's not a trip, I can go like maybe at least eight hours before feeling like I need to get out of here because I'm done. So it's it's a vast improvement from when I was younger where I could only do two to three hours. Well, Oh, what does that mean? Well, that means that um, I get to um, spend more time with people. And for me, that, <laughs> I don't know if this is unfortunate or not, but for me, that means I get to study people for longer 
because there are skill sets there that I want and that I need. And so the most efficient and effective way of me getting those skill sets is by actually being around people to learn more about them. So as an introvert, I often get misclassified as an extrovert because when I'm around people, I, I tend to give a lot of energy because, and I think the reason I do this, it's a more of an automatic response now. So I give a lot of energy. I, I tend to be very like, you know, uh, bring a lot of energy to the table. And I think the reason I do that and it's become something that I automatic, automatically default to, it's not because of me. It's more because I know that that's what most people gravitate towards. And so now it's to the point where I do it subconsciously. And that's not, that's not necessarily a positive thing, right? But I do it subconsciously. To, to, it's to the point where I do it subconsciously where, especially if I'm going for an event that I'm excited about, I'm able to show a lot of that emotion and I'm able to get myself in a mode where I'm more talkative and socializing with people. And so I come off as an extrovert to people that don't know me as well. But say when I was working in corporate, I have to be in the office five days a week. It's not sustainable for me. So the whole time I used to be in corporate, they hated me because I was kind of a loner and I would never drink the Kool-Aid because I always thought it was stupid, right? I was like, why? That's stupid. Why are you Why are you calling us family? This is not a family. It never made sense to me why, why they call each other family. That is not a family. You're literally there because you're getting paid to be there. Just do your job and go home. And so I was one of those people and I never ever until this day found a culture that worked for me. Um, and not only that, they always ended up not liking me at all. Just not because I was mean, I was never mean or anything, but just because I had so much trouble assimilating into their culture and environment. And, 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 and I also had trouble pretending to assimilate. And there was also the challenge that I didn't want to pretend to us. I like, I, I didn't want to, because it didn't make sense to me. Like, I didn't understand why these people were behaving in this way, why they were doing these things. And I didn't want to be a part of it. I just wanted to do my job and go home. So very introverted. So those people that have a lot of contact with me and enough contact with me, no, the, you know, this is someone that's not very extroverted, right? <laughs> but initially when I first meet people, when I first, like, for example, when I'm first doing the interviews and stuff, like I come off as very extroverted because I practice that skill set so much that it's kind of ingrained and I enjoy it. It is a good, excuse me, it's a good release for me when it comes to like my energy and it gets me ex more excited, especially for things that I might be more nervous about, like meeting new people or being around people that I don't know. And so a lot of people might, a lot, most people think I'm extroverted, but I'm not. I'm highly, highly introverted. Um, and I also often get confused um, with the INTJ type. I am INFJ. And sometimes when I take the test, I will get results for being uh, an INTJ. And the reason that happens is because I have a lot of the traits. I have a lot of traits that INTJs have I but I don't have those naturally I have those because I've developed them well enough <laughs> um to where they almost become you know um additional sources uh and skill sets for me so a lot of times depending on the question the way the way the way the, the question is worded and stuff like that I'll score um as an INTJ personality type, when in reality, I'm I'm definitely an INFJ um, personality type. So there's that too. Uh, so for example, there's a lot of things where I don't operate off of emotion. I don't I don't think it makes sense, depending on the situation, to operate 
based off of emotion or solely off of emotion. And so I won't, it, I go strictly based off of logic um, or times when I'm noticing that I'm getting emotional about something and I have to take a step back and separate the emotion from reality. So things like that, um, I think the INTJ personality type does a little bit better with, and I've just been able to cultivate those similar skill sets to where sometimes I get confused for both. But nonetheless, I think the most important thing to keep in mind when it comes to this extroverted, introverted issue is that don't let it limit you. Don't let it limit you. Don't let, don't put yourself in a box. I mean, just because you're introverted doesn't really mean or correlate to how well you do or are around people. Right. And I'm fairly, actually, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm fairly confident when I'm around people that they like me. I literally go in knowing, I wanted to say feeling like they'll like me, but I, I'm not going to lie. I go in knowing that they'll like me. And that confidence just comes from the confidence of knowing and trusting in my ability to accurately read the room and accurately read people and match their energy. And uh, just the confidence in knowing that I, I have the skill sets necessary to, to pull out relevant conversation topics that they'll care about, for example, um, to, to give off that extroverted feel, even though I'm not an extrovert. And so I'm very much an IN, uh, INFJ type because these are the things I think about it from the perspective of the other person and how comfortable they are and what they need from me in order for them to be comfortable. I still have a lot of work to do because, um, you know, for example, to, to have close relationships and friendships, it can be a hindrance uh, to be that way, but it just takes me more time before I'm able to open up and truly fully just be myself without feeling like I essentially have to entertain the, these people so they they have a good time and that good percep perception. So that's where most of my, that's where the work remains for me. So I continue to grow in this aspect, but I do think it's important for people, INF, um, INFJs and just people that are introverted in general to build up that confidence level. And even if you're not an introvert, you can make it, I mean, sorry, even if you are an introvert, doesn't, you can make it look like you're an extrovert and you'll be fine, right? For the most part. Now, if you have like a eight to five, then th that's a separate conversation. We'll have to make another video for that because it does become a lot more challenging. But if it's for like events and things like that, I think definitely just, being confident in yourself, being confident that you have these skill sets and being confident that you know how to carry a conversation, right? And that you know that these people are going to like you. And I already, I go and know, literally knowing that. So the surprise for me would be if someone doesn't like me. <laughs> that would be the surprise. I still get overly anxious where after the event, I'm replaying everything in my mind to make sure I did everything correctly. Not a good habit working on that. Um, or if I'm with friends, like I'll ask what, a friend that I might be closer and more comfortable asking, like, do you feel like everyone had fun? Do you feel like I said anything weird? Like I might do that. But for the most part, I've trained myself. So when I start thinking that way, um, I just train myself to, to be okay with whatever the result is, right? And I also continue to train myself to, to learn how to learn how to just be me, but not with the wrong people, right? It's going to be people that, that I feel safe with. So learning how to tell the difference is essentially what it comes down to. But yeah. So that's what I think. Let me know what you think. Comment below. Um, like this video if it was at all helpful. Um, and also subscribe if you feel like this content is at all helpful for you. And let me know so I know to do more of it. There's a lot of different types of content on my channel. I like that. Keeps me fluid and open to, to different things. 
but I, I, I know to do more of this type of content if that's content that you're interested in. Okay, thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.